Hi guys, PJ here. Today I'm working on a 2017 Ford Courier. Now this vehicle shares a lot in common with the Ford Fiesta, so if you do struggle with any part of this video, please refer to my Fiesta video. These are basically a Fiesta, but like a Transit Connect version of it. Now, what I'm going to show you how to do is how to wire the camera up using a fitting kit to the fuse box of the vehicle so that the camera goes on and off with the ignition switch. And you will also hide all the cabling so that everything is nice and tidy and factory fitted. Now, before following this video guide, I just need to point out that I am held no way liable or responsible for any injury to yourself or damage to your vehicle. With that out of the way, let's move on to the video itself. To do the job nice and easily, ideal things to sort of have lying around when you're doing it are a pair of snips, multimeter or a test probe screwdriver, you know one of those where you touch something and if it's live it illuminates, either one will do fine. Two or three cable ties is always handy, most important tool of the lot probably, plastic leverage tool, okay don't use a metal screwdriver for applying, you know, prying at the dash or anything like that, you will damage it, these things don't do any damage. About a pound off eBay or Amazon, well worthwhile getting a couple of those, and more than likely a fitting kit. So, if you're going to be fitting it to your vehicle, uh, depending on the brand of camera, most brands do have fitting kits or generic. This one terminates in mini USB, so it fits a wealth of different camera brands nice and easy. This is replacing your power cable that comes with your camera, you won't be using that power cable. Let's have a look what's in this pack. So guys, this is everything that is basically in the box. Like I was saying, there's your replacement power cable. This one terminating in mini USB, like I was saying. The other end ends in a power cable with a bullet connector on the end and an earthing ring, which basically goes under any bolt that goes to chassis earth. So this black cable to the chassis earth. I'll show you where we're gonna anchor that to. Nice and easy access to that one. And we have two fuse spurs. Now what these are is like doublers. So in other words, it converts one fuse socket into two. There we go. So you'll have the fuse on the back there, which will be a two or a three amp running the camera, and a fuse that you've pulled out of your fuse box will go in the front to run the original circuit. There's two sizes with the kit, this particular kit. In total, there's four or five different size fuses, but for this particular Fiesta, it's mini blade. It's this one. This larger one is for older commercial vehicles, older cars, some Mercedes is still use them, so we don't need that. Likewise, we do not need the fuse that goes with it. What we do need is the little two amp fuse, like I was saying, that plugs straight into here, onto the outside slot. I'm not going to be able to do that one-handed, I'm going to have to pop that in in a second. And we also have a ferrite filter, which pops open. It's on a hinge, look, there's your clips, and there's the hinge. This is to try and aid with DAB interference. If you've got a DAB radio in your van, then cameras can interfere with the reception this tries to help cut that down from my experience not very successfully dab interference and cameras on certain brands can be a big issue so we're going to pop that open and we're going to fit it to the power cable on the usb end okay so we're going to be putting it on here it basically goes through wraps around and comes out i'll show you that like so like I say, just wrap it round and then snap it shut. There's the item closed. And there's our two amp fuse put in, ready for the camera. Like I say, the other slot here will be the fuse you pull out of the fuse box. Next thing to do is to measure up your cable across the top of the window screen. And that's what the cable ties are for. We're going to wrap them around the cable periodically. And it's just to bulk it up to stop it sort of dropping down as soon as you get one of our lovely big potholes. You don't want it dangling down in front of your window screen. It's to help it stay put so we're going to wrap three round it periodically and then cover them in tape so the cable ties measured up we have one two snipped off there and three covered in tape that'll be your end product for all three cable ties the reason i'm going to cover them in tape is because as you possibly know when you cut a cable tie it can have a sharp edge on it in theory that could rub the inside of your headline and make a mess of it so it's just to pad it out once you've covered all three in tape you're then free to just Gently pull your headline in, normally with your fingers, I mean they're very, very fragile, you can just sort of pull them down. Like so, look, you don't need to go at it like a bull in a china shop, you can just, just ease it, tuck the cable under it all the way along so that it comes down here in the centre on this van. And we're going to go all the way along the edge and then behind the trim pillar here. If you have an airbag behind that, make sure you put the cable behind the airbag. 
Although, to be fair, it doesn't really matter because if they go off, it, they explode that powerful, they move the wire out of the way. But we're going to come round the plastic trim just here. Bit of background noise, guys. Sorry about that. It's a very, very busy estate where I'm doing this work and uh, I can't help that, unfortunately. Right, pinch your rubber seal, pull all the way down and then you can quite literally pull that forward. Put the cable there. Like I said, there's an airbag go behind it. No big deal. And run it all the way down the edge. This is where you'll use your plastic leverage tool just to shove it down. There's no airbag on this particular van behind here, so I've not got to worry about that. Tuck it in all nice and neat around the corner there. Next up, we're going to open the glove box because the fuse box is right behind it. And we're going to pop this panel off. So put your plastic leverage tool in, work it round. This one clips all the way around. This one's very tight, it's never been off before. There's the clips. Pop the whole panel off so it comes away. Go. You're now going to remove this plastic panel here, which again is on clips, and we can pop off forwards. This gives nice clear access to a 10mm nut, two of. Use either one of those as an earthing point. We're going to remove the 10mm nut right now so we can put an earth washer behind it for the black wire. Okay, now, glove box drop down, there's lugs each side, yeah? So basically you push the edges in, so you squeeze the glove box and it will drop down. It can be quite tricky sometimes, they don't move that well. One each side, fuse box behind, and there's the earthing bolt. You'll notice I've put a ring terminal on the end of it and a washer behind it. It's because the original little horseshoe that comes with them is quite weak and feeble and they can snap when you put the trim back together. Something I always do just sort of improves it. Like I say, I do this on a daily basis, so um, you don't want people, you know, packing up a couple of days down the line. So a little bit over the top maybe, but something I always do. Pop that back in, tiny it up. The glove box down, thread your power wire through, out, towards the fuse box. Now all we've got to do is test the fuse box to see which one is ignition switched. So with your ignition off and the key out, let's get a test probe out. So what we're doing is looking for a circuit that reads zero voltage. So if we just touch the top of the fuses, like so, zero with the ignition off. Some fuses will be live all the time they are no good they will flatten your battery if you wire it to those so we need a fuse that goes on and off with the ignition now we put the ignition on and test again with the ignition on same fuse now it has voltage this is an ideal fuse to use, it's an accessory position fuse, it's non-critical, don't use anything for airbags, ECU, that type of thing. So we can turn the ignition off and pull this fuse out nice and safely. With the fuse removed, we can now plug it into our fuse spur, like so, and plug the fuse spur into the socket the fuse came from, like so. You can now go ahead and test your camera goes on and off with the ignition before reassembly. With the camera mounted nice up on the window screen, turn the ignition on. A little blue light there saying it's coming on and hey presto. Power symbol in the corner, that's working correctly. Turn the ignition back off, nice. Any excess cabling that you may have, simply bunch up with electrical tape or a cable tie. We can tuck it nicely out of the way in any of the recesses before clipping the trim panel back on. Again, with the side one, just tap tap and putting your glove backs back up just by shoving it. And that, guys, is how you fit a dash cam to a 2017 Ford Courier. Any questions, pop them in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Bye for now.